Minnesota Governor Tim Walz and Ohio Senator J.D. Vance have agreed to debate each other on October 1st. That sets up a matchup of potential vice presidents just as early voting in some states gets underway for the general election. CBS News posted on its X feed the network invited both Vance and Walls to debate in New York City. They offered four possible dates, and Vance posted that he would accept the October 1st invitation, but he also challenged Walls to meet on September 18th. Usually, however, there's only one VP debate. Yeah, we don't need two vice presidential debates. I think one will be uh, interesting. I read a report that uh, Walls had told Kamala Harris uh, during the vetting process that uh, one of his weaknesses is not a very strong debater. Oh. Uh, so <laughs> we'll see how it goes yeah, then. Yeah, mm. uh, could be uh, interesting, but I think one is plenty. And then it also sounded like uh, Trump had challenged Kamala Harris to three. They agreed on September 10th, ABC. That's the one Dana's looking forward to with David Muir, who's going to be moderating. Uh, I'm sure you. <laughs> oh, that explains be, it. Yeah, you're yeah. going to be focused on the substance of that debate. Um, so they're definitely going to do that one, and then the Harris campaign has said they'll they'll after that one they'll talk about maybe one more. So I think hmm. I think two for uh, the presidential uh, race, and then and then uh, one for the vice president. We'll obviously That's forget funny. about the one with Trump and Biden. And yeah. set all this up. Let me tell you what. I mean, I that feel like historic. that was the most consequential debate of the election, though. Yeah, I mean, when. Have we seen a debate that consequential? Probably not since what? Nixon and Kennedy? Probably. I mean, there have been moments in past debates, but nothing quite like that. I mean, no. nothing that made the person <laughs> drop out a week later. Yeah, yeah. it was really remarkable. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's changed the whole dynamic of this race mm-hmm. uh, to the point where, you know, a race that looked like it was going to be a sure bet for Trump is now a toss-up. Right. Uh, so I, I think, again, two is good. And they're going to have to squeeze that that second one in there. So you've got the vice presidents on October 1st. And I would think you'd want to, the last debate, would you would want a presidential debate. So it would be right after that. But you've got early voting that's uh, going to be underway. Uh, so they're going to have to squeeze one more in at some point. I guess we'll see how the first one goes on September 10th. Uh, Could be interesting. Yeah. What else we have going on this morning, Chris? A key Republican lawmaker will introduce legislation to ban smoking in all public spaces in Florida. This would be to react to the impacts of legalized recreational marijuana. So Joe Gruders of Sarasota, the former chairman of the Republican Party, says two weeks ago he endorsed Amendment 3, one of the few Republicans to do so. That's not him, by the way. And um, and he said that uh, if it becomes legal for adults 21 and older with the 60 uh, percent or more approval, uh, this would solve the problem that Governor DeSantis has been going around yeah. the state complaining about, that the whole state's going to smell like pot. Yeah, DeSantis was saying, <laughs> like, bad thing. you'd be in you'd be in uh, Disney and, uh, you know, people just be smoking, people smoking up, and, ball, doing bong hits yeah. while they're sitting there in the middle of the Magic Kingdom. Right, with Mickey Mouse. <laughs> like, hey, you want to hit here? <laughs> Grab I mean, this it joint. could make waiting in line a lot more chill, you know? <laughs> that's, that's, that's a true. good way to get kicked out of Disney and throw away your $200 yeah. multi-park pass. You know, the thing is, with with smoking in general, I mean, do you even see it anymore? No, how many, no. How often do you actually see people smoking cigarettes? No, let, they're let shunned. Alone, yeah, let alone joints. Yeah, yeah. I really, really don't see people I remember smoking a lot. In the in the old building that we were in, uh, there was like two or three employees who would smoke, and they would have to go out in the back, like in this little area um, <laughs> where nobody could see them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know where it was? Right next to the yeah. newsroom. <laughs> yeah, and, the, and the people, exactly. the friends that I have that smoke now, like they're yeah. ashamed of it. Like they just kind of sneak off. Like if we're in a restaurant or whatever, they don't yeah. want anybody to know where they went. They're very like self-conscious about it. Yeah. I, I, Popping Tic Tacs. Yeah. Right. I never <laughs> got the sense that I didn't agree with DeSantis on that. And look, if they want to pass this law, that's fine. But I didn't agree that there was all of a sudden – uh, you know, you're going to have people smoking. Ever. I guess in some places, like in D.C. and and in Colorado, uh, there have been some instances where it's been a little too too much. Uh, it is a more <laughs> pungent smell. Uh, <laughs> I'd say so. That's for sure. Uh, but this law, I think, would would solve that problem. And again, uh, I reiterate, and and I'm not telling you how to vote on this amendment. I'm just saying, if there was ever a country that needed to chill the hell out. And smoke some weed. And take a joint and take a hit. It's this country. We are mm. just uh, a little stressed out there. Uh, just make sure, you know, pace yourself. Be careful. You don't want to be this guy. <laughs> yeah. <that's>... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, you know, I took too hard of a hit. Is that James? The first in there? time. Yeah. That actually sounds like fun. All right, what else we got going on this morning, Chris? Well, five people have been charged in the accidental ketamine overdose death of actor Matthew Perry. Among those charged, a live-in personal assistant and two medical doctors, according to the U.S. attorney Martin Estrada. He said that these defendants took advantage of Perry's addiction issues to enrich themselves. They knew what they were doing was wrong, and they put Perry at great danger by essentially helping him with his uh, drug use yeah. and then profiting off it. Yeah, the callousness. Dana, you uh, mentioned those text messages earlier. Yeah, so there was a text message between two doctors. He went to the doctors because he had depression, anxiety, he was looking for help, and they they prescribed ketamine to him, but they mm-hmm. way over-prescribed it. And in one message between these two doctors, one of them said, I wonder how much this moron will pay. And he paid like $50,000 for 20 doses of ketamine. And then his live-in assistant who was charged was the one who was injecting it into him. Mm. Right. That's not a doctor. That's a dealer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And then then he went to go get street drugs because he knew he was overpaying for the ketamine mm-hmm. from the doctors. And one of the street dealers texted the other after they heard the news about him dying and said, delete all our messages. Mm, yeah. yeah. They know. It reminds I, me of the Michael Jackson situation. Yeah. Yes, exactly, with the doctor who was given him propofol. Mm-hmm. And the assistant, I mean, did uh, Matthew Berry no favors. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, just being an enabler there, although... I'm sure he was being paid very well yep. and living a good life exactly. with Matthew Perry mm-hmm. and, yeah, just didn't care about him at all. Right. Yeah, it's unfortunate because, you know, Perry had that book talking about yeah, his, like his troubles. Better. And, yeah, he had fought very hard against mm-hmm. the addiction issues, but in the end, you know, wasn't able to uh, overcome it. That's the struggle with addiction. Chris Trankman with today's top stories. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you.